The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 13th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I am absolutely grateful for your presence here. And even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't dial in, we've got you covered. You can send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside your tiger's den, our tiger's den, well, then any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday, of course. This is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A sea of red out there. You've got the uh, all the U.S. indices, uh, U.S. indices that we track. Trading the downside. All the sectors inside the S&P 500 doing the same. Dow's off 437. S&P's down 55. Nasdaq 185. Russell is down 58. That's uh, almost a three percent move there. 48 points for the uh, semis. Trendy's off 414. Three percent there. Gold's off 25 bucks. One and a quarter percent. Nearly three percent for silver. 60 pennies. Natural gas off nine cents. 30-year Treasury printout 118.14. Our leader to the in the clubhouse, the upside is MedPace Holdings, 39 buck move, 12 and a half percent. Super Micro, 2 percent move, 18 bucks. Echo Lab, 15 bucks, 7 percent. O'Reilly Automotive, 12 bucks, a little over 1 percent. Nvidia is up 10 bucks today, a little over 1.3 percent. To the downside, the Shakers, Westco International, 44 bucks, 23 percent. Avis. The rental car group down 20 percent, 33 bucks. Moody's is off 7 percent. Watsco down 6 percent. Arm Holdings down 14 bucks. That's a 21 dollar move to the downside. So let's begin with the uh, new profiles that are attempting to form out here. Now, the difference that I have in different profiles in the ES Mini is going to be the center line. Um, so here, I'll just start with this set of charts. So here we can see it's really actually kind of hard to see. Let me just turn off price for a moment because then you'll be able to see it. A moment to do that let's turn off the price and now you'll see the new profile so you can see this is a bearish structure profile again bearish in structure we're looking at the upper left hand panel bearish in structure because at the top of the profile is where sellers are located the bottom is where buyers are located the center is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value so we have more sellers up towards where the sellers are located the 50 52 level so what they should do is a close below 50 24 should be able to take us down to the bottom of that profile 49 39 out there let's take a look at the nq's profile out here again i'll just simply turn off price i'll also turn off those trend lines let's get those turned off here you can see the new profile it too is bearish in structure so resistance is between 17 793 and 17 924 where support is down at the 17 531 level let's turn the price back on so we've been very close to testing that support area inside the nq 17 531 the bottom profile 17 7 586 17 586 the actual low of the trading session in the case of the es mini the bottom of that profile is down at 40 939 the low of the day has been 4961 the um 
So the interesting thing here is let me let, for, let me turn off price for the Dow because this profile has just recently shown up. I just want to refresh this screen and see that's still there. So the Dow says it has a new profile that's attempting to form. Again, I'm using my advanced Doppler tool with support at 38.519 and resist at 38.871. I believe we're trading below that as we speak right now. We most certainly are. So watch at the day's end, 38.519, if price is able to close above that, the potential new profile uh, will have held. In the case of the Russell 2000, big move down to the downside. It was nothing more so far than a test of support, that support level being 1975. No new profile has formed there. I had mentioned that I've got a little bit slightly different center areas, both on, well, really on the ES Mini. So if we go take a look at those charts here, give me a moment, we'll flip over to those. In the case of the ES Mini, I don't have an easy way to turn off price here, but what you can see is 49.39, the bottom, that remains the same. It's the center which has shifted. It's down to 49.67, whereas the center on that black background chart was at 50.24. It makes a huge difference. So how do you know which one is right? I like to say they're both right, and we use them both. Now, what this really tells us is that a close below 49.39, because we use the ES Mini bullish structure profile. Again, remember, I won't have confirmation of this until this evening. Why are you telling me? Why are you telling me about it now? Because you need to know about it now. Because especially if you trade intraday, you want to understand where those buyers are uh, potentially lined up, and that's what the profiles help us do. So, in the case of the ES Mini, price has pulled back and tested its bullish structured level out there. Now, you can see that it shows a potential bar number nine of a TD nine count. But in order to do that, price would have to close the day above the a close of bar number five. And that's up at the 5,015 level. Doesn't matter. Right now we have a three river evening star. That'll convert that will confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top, likely at days unless we get some type of huge rally and negates that candle signal. So it doesn't matter whether we're going to get a TD nine count or not. Inside the ES mini, it looks like at days end we will have a top. The question is can price take out that 4939 level? If it does, the anticipation would be that price will get back to the 2024 low, and that's at the 4702 level. Inside the NQ, it's got that same bottom of its profile out there, and it's got really the same profiles altogether. 17,531 being a key area to watch out here. So the Dow, the ES Mini is going to have a road momentum indicator top. The Dow already has it. The rally yesterday, by the time we got to the 5 p.m. Uh, close out here, uh, price had closed below that 38,892 level. So it's got a top. The ES Mini has a top. The Russell, um, I don't know what it's got, quite frankly. And the NQ at this stage here does not have a topping pattern, nothing confirmed. We're not get, we don't have a bearish reversal candle as we speak, at least just yet. So that's what's going on. We take a look at those four equity future contracts. Let's not stop there. Let's go take a look at the cash indices out here. We take a look at the cash indices. What we're going to see is tops all over the place. In the case of the Dow Jones, you've got a bear sash candle. That confirms a Rhodes momentum indicator top. In the S&P, you've got a gap to the downside. That confirms a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Same for the NDX 100. The Russell 2000, again, in the world of its own. Maybe it completed a small A to B equals CD, and a gap to the downside is a Gartley sell pattern. I'm not going to focus on that just yet. If we take a look at the Russell, the Russell, the semis out there, confirm Rhodes momentum indicator top with the gap to the downside. Same for the transports. Same for the NASDAQ composite. And now, in the case of the New York Stock Exchange, today's candle, bearish engulfing, bearish sash candle, will confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Basically, what I'm trying to share with you is there's a very likely possibility that we've got a top. The question is, is that just a top that leads to a two day, two bar knee jerk retracement out there? Or which we should say is two to four bars. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at tfnn.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's take a quick peek at the intraday charts. We've got a couple of emails. I want to get to those. Don't want to get behind. Only a few, though. So we're taking a look at the charts here for the ES Mini. We've got my multi time frame set of charts out here. The ES Mini, here's what we know. We know that price, at least on the white background charts, is pulled back to its support zone. Again, that's between 49.39 and 49.067. Oh, so when you're pulling back into a support zone, you start looking at those other, on a daily time frame, you start looking at those other intraday times to see if you can identify identify a bottom. Turns out on the 60-minute time frame chart, we're going to confirm as we come into the 12 noon time frame, a TD9 count bottom. This bar that we're currently in just simply needs to close below the close of bar number five. Well, unless we get some type of miraculous rally, and I doubt that's going to happen, we're going to get a confirmed weekly TD9 count bottom. What that says is the price should bounce up towards its oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line is currently printed to 5,002. If it does rally from here, that is likely to be a uh, – that, uh, that figure will likely move higher. But just use the $5,000 what the 60-minute time frame chart is communicating to you is the possibility of rally into the 5,000 area. If we look at the 30-minute time frame chart, I do not have a bottom pattern. There is not an A to B equals CD pattern to the downside, at least that Stevie would use because the C to D uh, – the B to C uh, would be less than a 0 0.382, well less than a 0.382. So no bottom there, but we do have this new profile that is formed. And that's got resistance up at the 49.88 level. So even though the 60 minute says I want to rally up towards the 5,000, 49.88 is going to be the first hurdle. If we look at a 15 minute time frame chart, its hurdle is 49.91. Now it's got a road's momentum indicator bottom, price consolidating with inside it. Of course, if price trades below the lows of the day, we're headed much lower out there. That much lower, by the way, inside the ES Mini, I would say would be that 49.39 level. 
I don't have any other bottom patterns or signals out here. We take a look at the two hour, the four hour, and the five hour. So that's what's going on from an intraday perspective. Um, I have another screen. I'm not going to turn that on because sometimes I forget to go back and forth. The ES mini, it's 0 0.382 retracement is uh, of this move to the downside is up at the 5001 level. So 5001. And I'm just using it doesn't matter what time frame I use, quite frankly. 5001 is a 0.382 retracement for the ES mini, which ties right out to that 5000, the oscillator and change line is really the point that I wanted to make. As far as the other retracements and the other indices, the NQs already made the 0.382 retracement. In fact, let's put the NQs charts up here. That'll help us out. So they got the NQ, March 2024, out here. The 0.382 retracement was 17,791. That's basically what it hit almost to the T. Let me see. What was the actual high? It was 17,791.75. And 17,791.02 was the actual 0 0.382 retracement. So it makes sense when you get to that first elevator. That's either going to turn down and head to the floor or it's just a place where people get off the elevator while price moves to the upside. So now let's take a look at the NQ charts. In the NQ, it does not have a TD9 count bottom. On its 60-minute time frame chart, it has a bullish structured profile. And price has gotten up towards where it should have, which is 17.812. So 17.812 is really going to be your resistance level. I don't have a bottom pattern signal on a 30-minute time frame, nor do I on a 50-minute time frame. I do have a Roach Mintum indicator signal on the 10-minute time frame. So what do we know about those charts out here? Well, in the case of the 10-minute, you're above profile level, so rally could continue to ensue. The same thing for the 15-minute time frame. And right now, the 30-minute time frame is trying to do that same thing. What that means when you trade above the top of a profile, at least if you do it for two consecutive bars, if you were in a downtrend, that tells you about a profile change in trend. Profile change in trends usually take us to the next areas of resistance. In the case of the 30-minute chart for the NQ, that's all the way up at 17.963. I'm not going there. At least I'm not going there yet. But right now, what you'd be watching really is going to be the 17.813 area inside the NQ. We'll come back and take a look at the NASDAQ in a little bit. That's a question that came in from pearls inside the tiger's end and a little bit of a follow-up to the conversation that john and i had yesterday uh, morning but like right now let's go ahead and get on to a couple of uh, requests that are out here the first one coming in from tim m and he wants to take a look at crowdstrike the ticker symbol there is crwd so we take a look at crowds and what tim is looking for is a entry point so when we take a look at this uh, set of charts out here what do we have all that we have today is so there's a new profile that formed yesterday inside of uh, CrowdStrike. So I'm going to open up just the daily time frame chart out here. This new profile uh, that formed, price was above it. It's a bear structured profile. And so an area where price would find support, if it's only a counter trend move to the downside, would be either the top or the center. More often than not, it's at the center of the profile. Now, it's really the body of the candle. That's the essence of price. Do I worry that the wick has moved through that level and is trading back above it? No, I do not. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what the wicks uh, had uh, done, the upper or lower wick. It's really about the body of the candle. That is truly the essence of price. And right now, we can see that price has held that center, which is 30702 out there. So at this stage here, with regard to CrowdStrike on a daily time frame, a real aggressive trader you know, might add to a position there. But Let's not let's not let's hold off on that uh, thought process. Let's look at the weekly and the monthly time frame chart. The weekly and the monthly time frame chart look nothing but bullish to Stevie. Why is that? Because price is above profile resistance. Price is above its green oscillator and change line. Those are bullish conditions. That does not mean that price can't pull back. It just means that for those time frames, we have bullish conditions and they're likely to head higher. Now, the monthly chart had a swing point. From back, and this is CrowdStrike, from back in November of 2021, there was 81 million shares that traded hands. Last uh, month, we did 71 million shares. So far, you're at 25 million. So it's taking out that swing point. It's doing, let's pull this chart back just a tad. It's doing it with lighter volume out there. But nonetheless, nonetheless you're still above that. And you're at, in essence, new all-time highs um, this month. Uh, really just a few days ago as we take a look at the uh, daily time frame chart. So, Tim, you're looking for an entry point out here. Um, let's look at a 30-minute time frame chart. The 30-minute time frame chart, that's not helping us a ton. Let's go down to a 15-minute chart, see if there's anything there. And then the lastly, we'll go up to a – I don't see anything there. Let's go up to a 65-minute time frame chart. Um, 
So the intraday signals are not really being super helpful. However, the 65-minute chart here, Tim Price did pull back well below that 314.03 level, but on the 65-minute time frame, closed right above. That was a breakout area. So, hmm. Tim, best I've got for you as we speak right now is really going to be that 30702 area out there. Uh, that's what Stevie's got on his chart. So I hope that that helped you out. Uh, maybe you get another pullback into that uh, zone. So I'd say the buy zone right now, based upon the daily chart, would be between 298.45 and 30702, with the latter being the preferred. Otherwise, you get all the way down to the bottom of that profile. Pearl is asking about whether or not gold might have a bit of a bounce. So let's go take a look at our gold charts out here, see what they're doing. And the question is, we take a look at these gold charts. Do we find any support? So let's start with the possible support level pearls, and let's start with the monthly time frame. The monthly time frame is trading back into the top of its uh, monthly profile. That's up at the 2010 level, 2010. That is an area of support because price has been above it for more than two consecutive months. So on the monthly basis, price is testing an area of support. On the weekly basis, it's the same. It happens to be the top of its profile. The top of its weekly profile is at 2003. I hear the music. Pearls, when we come back from this break, we'll further look at gold. You can see on the daily time frame that gold is also back at a possible support level at 2130. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the uh, charts here for uh, gold. We've established that on the monthly, weekly, and on a daily time frame that uh, price has uh, made its way back uh, to potential support, that being the top of the uh, monthly and the top of the weekly profile. And on the daily time frame, it happens to be the uh, it's TD Nightout breakout area 2130. Now, when we get to support levels, pearls, uh, what I like to see on the intraday time frames are some kind of bottoming patterns and i don't see that when i look at a 30 minute time frame chart it was just a straight waterfall cascade to the downside on really all these time frames and no bottom signals out here no td9 counts no roads meant to indicator signals so your question was mostly was this more of a small bounce and so the answer to that question is yes because price is back at support but where's that bounce going to go and that's really a great question. I don't know if I have the answer to that. If we take a look at the five-minute time frame out here, it's one that does have a roads momentum indicator bottom. And it's just really led to a sideways move. You know, not really much out here. That being said, price is trained above the top of its profile. So price should bounce further. That bounce should get us back to the most recent high, intraday high so far, 2009. If price can clear 2009, you could actually see 2019 out of it. Now, that happens to be the five-minute TD9 count breakdown level. In order for that to happen, though, we're going to have to get some help from the uh, currency pairs. There's a directional correlation between gold and the U.S. dollar index out there. Um, and so we're going to need some help. So instead of going to the U.S. dollar index right now, what I'm going to do, first I'm going to close out these charts, and then we're going to take a look at the uh, the euro, the yen, and the pound, because that's really where the help is going to need to come from out there. Although here here's also the gold. Here's also gold, uh, silver, and the uh, GDX. So let me just stay with this, and I'll go take a look at the currency pairs. So you can also see inside of gold, we've got a small A to B equals CD to the downside that has completed. You're also in bar number seven. That says in order for a TD nine count pattern to form out here with regard to the daily time frame gold's going to have to spike below today's low whatever it is tomorrow the next day or the day after out there to confirm that td9 count bottom pattern on the uh in the case of silver yeah i don't have anything out there price is trading below profile you know in order to accomplish an a to b equal c to the downside we got to get to the 2130 2160 type area in the case of the gdx also today will become bar number eight for it so it could form a td9 count bottom between today and uh, thursday of this week there's also an a to b equal cd pattern that's present so your bet your best bet is to wait for a bullish reversal candle to then uh, generate a buy the D point pattern, take a long position inside of the miners. Of course, we're going to want to see uh, the U.S. dollar index, at least at this stage, until until that uh, correlation uh, breaks. We're going to want to see the U.S. dollar index back off. So if the U.S. dollar index is going to back off, it's going to need the help and the assistance of the euro, the yen and the pound. No, it turns off, Steve, you didn't have those charts up. We're going to put those charts up now. And here we're going to have both the daily and the weekly time frame, at least on the monitor that you're looking at. I've got another monitor that has a 30-minute time frame just so I can see if there's any kind of uh, topping or bottoming pattern, depending on which one it is that we're looking for. Um, when I take a look at the... Uh, when I take a look at the Great British Pound again, you don't see it. I do not see any kind of a bottoming pattern. That suggests that it wants to head lower. Now, that's a very right-hand panel that we're looking at out here. And so on the daily time frame, we're trading below yesterday's low. We found resistance at that oscillator and change line. It's trading inside a consolidation. Stevie doesn't see a bottoming pattern on the 30-minute time frame chart. So it may just be heading towards the bottom of that consolidation. If it does that, it'll put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. Let's take a look at the Japanese yen. On this chart here, as the yen moves higher it is getting weaker that means u.s dollar index is getting stronger we are in bar number eight so there's a potential for a td9 count top to form out here between today and uh thursday i'm looking at the 30 minute time frame chart i do not have a topping signal so we're likely to see a further rally inside of the japanese yen that should put more strength inside the u.s dollar index the euro had an a to b equal cd to the downside it has now achieved its one-to-one -one price objective out there 1.073 um 
And right now, it just looks like this wants to head lower. When I look at the intraday charts out here, I do not see any kind of a bottoming signal. So in essence, what I'm getting here with regard to the U.S. dollar index, at least with regard to these three currency pairs that make up 83 percent of the weighting that, um, you know, that the U.S. dollar index could, in fact, continue to move higher. What we do know about it, though, is that price is trading right into potential resistance. That's the bottom of that weekly profile. So we're kind of at this stage here where I'm not seeing a ton of, uh, at least on the 30-minute chart, not a ton of, uh, of reason to suggest that the dollar won't break out above this level, but resistance is resistance, and until it fails, we've just got to rely upon that. Okay, so girl, uh, pearls, that should help you out with regard to gold. You also had a request to take a look at Lightspeed Crude, I believe. So let me close out these charts just to uh, free up some resources, and we'll go take a look at Lightspeed Crude. We'll do them on Stevie's intraday charts out here. Just got to give me a moment to get there. And uh, it'll take a moment for these to populate as well. Day trading. Let's get Lightspeed Crude. We are in the March contract. And let's see what we have here. And I believe the question there was also, is there a bounce? Now, in the case of Lightspeed Crude, I think that was a question. It's up at resistance. In fact, I will wait for these charts here to uh, populate. Give it a minute. So we take a look at the daily time frame here for Lights Recruit. First, it's trading up into resistance zone. 78.62 is going to be the real key level to be watching here. So you were trading above yesterday's high, the, the, the day before's high. So you're, it's a bullish structured profile. So the daily time frame chart is saying, yes, I've got further rally, but right up into resistance and that resistance being the 78.62 area. Turns out there's also resistance at this high, this high being January 26th. That is the TD9 count top. And that top is at uh, 78.26. So you've got resistance at between 78.26 and 78.62 out there. We're trading at 77.98. The five hour time frame chart, and this bar that we're taking a look at right now, is going to complete at 2 p.m. And it closed above the prior bar, which is 77.84, when they gained its roads momentum indicator top. That would be a bullish signal. We could get a TD9 count top on the four hour time frame chart. No top just yet on the two hour or the 60 or the 30 or the 15 or the 10 minute time frame chart. So I would go like that. I would say this pearls looks like that we get a further rally inside of lights recruit. That's really just up to resistance levels. And again, on the daily time frame, that's either going to be the high from January 26 at 7826 or the top of its profile at 7862. And no, I was not dyslexic when I uh, was giving you those uh, digits out there. So hope that helps you out. Uh, Vic wanted to take a look at URA. So let's take a look at uh, that. Uh, that was CrowdStrike. I think we already took a look at that. Let's go take a look at URA. And uh, URA, and I apologize, Vic, I don't remember what you were asking, And uh, but let me just share with you what Uranium is doing. It is pulled back right now, and it is, or the URA ETF, I should say, uh, it is testing uh, profile support. Now, profile support is at 29.28. We're trading at 29.23. A close below 29.28 what I really say is a close below the swing point from January 29th. That's 28.91. If price closed below 28.91, we're looking at lower price. Now, that swing point had volume of 2.8 million shares. So far for the day, you've done 1.4. What that tells us is that price is moving back with volume. And that says a close inside this candle, which it's likely to do, that candle ranges from 28.91 to 30.10 out there, is going to suggest at least a test of that low. When you close inside a swing point with volume, you're likely to go test the low of that. You don't see that chart? Son of a gun. I knew I would do it. It's only a matter of time. Thank you, Mr. Bill. We're going to have those charts up on the screen, and Steve will repeat that when we get back from this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. Sorry about that uh, screw up out there. We knew it was about to happen. And we're taking a look at the uh, URA. Uh, this is for uh, Vic. Um, and so right now, you got price trading below profile support. We've established that price is moving into its swing point with volume. That says price is likely to test that 2891 level. If we get it closed below that, we're likely to head to 2801 to 2755. You've got a weekly road momentum indicator top. You've got a uh, now you don't have a sell the D point, just a road momentum indicator top out there, and. Um, and on a monthly time frame, you may get a rose momentum indicator top as well. Too early to call that, but you might just simply get a, a TD9 count top. So right now, if you were looking for an entry point, I'd sit, I'd sit idle. I'd watch what happens as price gets back to that low. Should it get back to 28.91? I also wasn't showing, unfortunately, the light sweep crude charts. I'm going to put those back up on the screen real quickly here. Just go through those real quickly. Uh, here's your TD9 count. Uh, top that formed out here that was on the date of January 26th that makes that high a key level of resistance up at 78.26 and then above that at 78.62 is the top of that daily profile. Nothing else really to report on uh, here inside. You know, you've got a couple other potential signals, maybe a four-hour TD9 count top out there. Um, you already have a Roach Mintum indicator top on the five-hour chart. Uh, you just need to see where that 2 p.m. close is. All right. The last request that we've got out, not really, there's two more requests. This next request is to take a look at ASPN. Dana's question is, is this really headed to 16 bucks? Dan, I don't have anything inside my systems to suggest otherwise. Absolutely. Here, what the, when I say my system, what we're taking a look at is ASPN. It is trading above the top of its daily profile. It is also trading above its TD9 count breakdown resistance level, and that is at 1264. When you 
when you close above a TD knockout breakdown resistance, that definitely tells us about a change in trend. So whereas this was a change in trend to the downside, formed a nice TD nine count bottom, a wave number seven bottom out there. Now what price is likely to do is go after 1607. If that doesn't like 1607, that's a TD nine count breakdown level on the daily time frame. It might really like 1647. And 1647 is the top of the weekly profile. So no matter what time frame I look at, whether it's daily, whether it's weekly, whether it's monthly, ASPN wants to continue to rally. Now, I'm not suggesting that somebody jump on board that train just yet. And the reason being is today is going to be bar number six to the upside of consecutive moves higher out there. Instead, now it doesn't mean that it can't go on. It's just a bit extended even for this stock out there. And so this we've got a six bar move that took place out here back on July the 3rd of 2023. That led to a two day rally, a two day rally, a two day pullback out there. So if you're looking to get in, I'd wait for a two day pullback odds favor that is likely to begin sometime soon. So I hope that helps you out, uh, Dan. 16 is the uh, number. Now, we did have a request. Uh, it was from Pearls earlier. It was uh, asking about the... Um the NDX 100. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to switch back to the black background screen. The reason is because when I use my uh, season next tool, the other screens went blank on blank on me and that creates a real problem. This one did not. So let's start off with first with regard to the general markets. Uh, what I'm saying is we've got a definite short term top that should last from two to four days or two to four weeks or two to four months. Yeah, so let's kind of go through that process. Right now, we're just in the two to four day camp out there, but I could easily be swayed to the two week camp. So how is Stevie coming up with that? Well, here we're going to take a look at, this is the NDX 100. That's what the question was about. That's something that we had taken a look at yesterday. If we take a look at, this is the seasonal time frame chart, just a normal seasonal, no presidential stuff, no nothing out here. Uh, this is over the last uh, 25 years, last quarter of a century. What we can see out here is typically the NDX 100 forms a top right around February the 15th. So we'll call yesterday, today, February 13th, February 12th. That's close enough for Stevie. Now, what this shows, this shows that price would typically move down into March 12th. Well, if I take a look at my calendar here, just to open it up, I'm just kind of curious myself. So if we got a top this week, one week, two weeks, three weeks, what did I say, March 12th? Four to five weeks. That would that would give us our four week, two to four week uh, decline to the downside. So that would just simply be following the normal uh, uh, seasonal pattern over the last 25 years for the Nasdaq 100. If I take a look at the last 10 years out there, there's the last 10. Really shows the same kind of a uh, pattern out there. A little bit less muted. Um, even if I go to 38 years, we're at the same kind of a pattern. If we switch it from the NDX to the S&P 500, let's just do that for the moment. You can see we're also near a point in time where we typically see a decline for a couple of weeks. So everything is really lining up as we speak right now for a couple of week decline. Um, so that's the first thing to uh, consider. What's the second thing to consider out here? If we do have a change in trend, then what we would see is we will see these levels of profile support areas fail. So inside the right now, you've got to just write this number down on your pad of paper inside the NQ. That's going to be a 17,531. And that's really the NQ, even though you may not follow it, you may not trade it. You do need to know it. So find some system that you've got out there. Uh, that will uh, give you at least that data feed so you know what's going on. And if we do get a closed blow, 17,531 inside the NQ, the likely target would be down at the um, 16,334 level. That is the 2024 low so far. So that would be the uh, price uh, target area. Now, what else do we talk about in the NDX 100? And we're going to switch over to those charts. One of the questions that I had asked to uh, John, uh, yesterday, because if we take a look at Marty Armstrong's work, uh, what he will tell you, if you look up his definition of a phase transition, is it needs that coil that we took a look at. It needs that spring. In other words, it needs that consolidation. So after we got off the air yesterday, I went back to my charts just trying to identify a consolidation period. Now, what I did, I did very much like John did, was he, all, he set his scale to a logarithmic scale. So if you take a look on the right-hand side and those numbers look a little bit funny to you, it is a little bit funny because I've got this set to a logarithmic scale. Now, if we take a look at this, 
Uh, this is the uh, 2020, uh, sorry, the 2020, this is the 2000 high out there. You know, if you want to understand how long it took us to break that 2000 high, just in approximation in, these are months out here, how many months? So let's go from here to about, right about here. It was nearly 200 months, 200 months out there. So, you know, almost 20 years, uh, 18 years, something like that, If uh, 200 months. Uh, that was just quick uh, division in my head out there. So that, now, when you this is this when you um, when you break a consolidation, those of you that have listened to the show, you know I've shared with you that when you break a consolidation, you typically you meaning the instrument will typically do a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. So where does this take us to? Well, the interesting thing here is when I change these charts back to their uh, back to their. Um, uh, uh, linear scale model. Why didn't it do that? Oh, I put the percent scale here. Now we take a look at this. So that's the exact same set of charts. I've just converted this from the log scale to the linear scale out there. And the reason why I know that this is a good good consolidation pattern is because this is a monthly chart out here. For a number of months, we had price that was up at the top of that consolidation and just never broke through. The final breakthrough really came in uh, January of 2017. And then it's been a nice move to the upside. So what this, with regard to the potential for a phase transition, where could this possibly take us to? Oh, let me get rid of the percent. Just sorry about that. The answer to that question is in the $30,000 area. So there's that piece of a puzzle for John. And that suggests that what we're really looking for is a bottom. But that next bottom may not take place for the next two to four weeks. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors.
Welcome back, folks. So now we've got the NASDAQ 100 charts up on my screen. We're taking a look at the uh, monthly. That's the left-hand side. The weekly, that's the center panel. And the daily uh, horizontal trading range boundary lines are brought to us by uh, Bud Ross. What we can see here on the monthly time frame is price basically has gotten up to that next level, 18,144. We didn't get right up there. We use these more as guidelines than we do exact to the T. We can see on the weekly time frame, 17,841 uh, uh, is a horizontal trading range boundary and 18,112 on the daily time frame. So another reason, we're up at a resistance area. Again, resistance doesn't necessarily have to hold. Price can break through that. But now we change the screen out here. Many of you already know why I've said a two to four day retracement out here. And that's just simply because of the normal breathing pattern or dance steps that markets typically do. This left-hand panel is a daily time frame. What we can see out here since the October 26th, the bottom out here, we've had one, two, three, four, five two bar pullbacks we've had one five bar pullback that was during the time frame between december 28th and uh, january the 5th out there uh, so odds favor a two to four day pullback yes i've got five out there now that's on the daily time frame but if we look at the weekly time frame and this is why i say i could be convinced that what we're in store for is a two to four week pullback if we take a look at this weekly time frame we've only had one week where we actually had a lower close out there. Just one. Boy, that is certainly a strong. We take a look at the monthly time frame chart as well. The last pullback was at October 2023, where the daily formed a Rhodes Mentum indicator bottom, although it's not shown here. And that was your basic, you know, two to three bar knee jerk reaction low. So at this stage of the game, we want to watch the profile levels. It'll end up being closes below new profiles, whether it's these profiles that form that we've been taking a look at today. I'm going to switch screens out here. That's the last uh, image that we'll leave you with if I can find those. Whether it's these new profiles inside the NQ or the ES or even the Dow, but closes below those start to get us looking at, well, certainly the two to four day pullback, but it could be a two to four week pullback. And folks, what I didn't get a chance to show you, when I went back and took a look at 1929 and took a look at the pullbacks there, uh, we saw two monthly, two, we saw pullbacks of two months. So even if we get that, this rally to the upside, that 30,000 is absolutely still in play. Have a wonderful day, folks. I'll see you on wonderful Wednesday. Have a terrific Tuesday. Be safe out there.